What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the 10 Minute Mailbag. It is Monday morning. I hope you are not hungover either from alcohols or from just being sleep deprived from watching the Super Bowl last night, in which the Enter Team name here won the game. I'm recording this on Sunday morning, so I am not a fortune teller. I have no idea. You all popped off in last week's 10 Minute Mailbag. I appreciate it. One of the best performing ones to date. In fact, last week's view total for all the videos was through the effing roof. So thank you. Make sure you're smashing the subscribe button because MLB The Show 24 content is coming and we're going to review just about everything that happens starting with the first feature premiere on the 15th. That's this week. But you all know how the 10 Minute Mailbag works at this point. I take your comments, your questions, your concerns, and I turn them into a video where we go in depth on the things that I think are most pressing. So we've got four really good ones queued up this week. Let's jump on into them. We're starting as always with 10 minutes on the clock, because that's how this works. It's the 10 Minute Mailbag. So three, two, one, we're starting. Our first question today comes from Original, a frequent commenter. I appreciate it very much. Comments on everything. You can disregard the previous question. I will. Uh, but here's one no one's mentions. What are, what are the proper etiquette or what is the proper etiquette when facing a real 99 player? I just played against my first and I feel like some people probably just don't know what the proper etiquette is. So interesting question. I, I, I think the proper etiquette is just like the proper etiquette for playing any other human being. Um... Don't be a troll. Don't uh, abuse, like, exploits in the game. Don't replay shit. Don't, just don't be a weirdo. Honestly, what it comes down to. Don't be a weirdo. Uh, I also think it's probably a little strange, though it happens to these players all the time, if right after a real 99 game, whether you win or lose, if you start, like, going to follow them on Twitter and DMing them and that, I think, think, I think that's strange. There are circumstances, like if it's a super cool game, you hit them with a GG. If like they're on your favorite team, you'd be like, hey, so cool, I just got to play a Yankee. Just wanted to say what's up. If they're streaming, if they're a streamer while you're playing them, go in the chat, say GG. Um, I played Anthony K in a 12-0 game for BR. And he beat my cheeks. But he was super cool. I was streaming at the time. He came in my stream. He subbed, which was super cool. Uh, we followed each other on, on Twitter. That was a cool experience. Anthony K is a cool dude. Um, but some people just like, they have real 99s because it's cool. But like, I don't think they want like randos just jumping into their DM. So I, I'm curious how you handled the situation. This is a judgment-free zone, of course. So if you if, if you or anybody else have DM'd or followed, like, that's fine. Like, do what you want. I'm just trying to put myself in those people's shoes and what I would think. So I'm curious. What did you guys do or what do you guys think? Um, also, have you ever played a real 99? If you have, tell me who it was. Um, the only two I've ever played were Anthony K, who kicked my ass, and I played Cardinals prospect. I think his name is Ivan Herrera. Did I get that right? I think he's a top catching prospect. Yeah, he beat me too. So <laughs> doing great against real individuals. But thank you for your question. Hey, everyone. Sorry to interrupt this absolutely incredible video that you're watching, but I have something very exciting to tell you, and it is that we have new merch available. It's been a little while since I've hyped up the merch, but like I said, I'm super excited about this. It shows off the new logo, some new designs, some new things that you guys might not have thought you would have wanted. So let's go look at it. As you can see here on my merch store, we have a discount running. If you use code KDJ10, now through the end of February, you're getting 10% off your entire order. So now is the best time to stock up on some new gear. We've got t-shirts, stickers for sticking on things, hoodies for if you live in chilly places and want to keep your nipples all sorts of warm, notebooks if you enjoy writing things down, of course, we still have the classic The Show the Podcast t-shirts. And lastly, my favorite piece of new merch, it is the embroidered firewood hoodie. This is stitched on. It is a piece of my logo that doesn't include KDJ TV. It's just the bolt. It's just the bat. It looks crazy good. And it also appears on the left wrist. Come on now. So like I said, KDJ10 gets you 10% off now through the end of February. And the link to my merch store is always in the description. If you buy something, let me know. I'll blow you a kiss. All right, back to the content. Moving on here to less of a question, but something I needed to, to bring up because I need help. From Joshua, 
Precision rings help. We're talking about the Dual Sense Edge, by the way, which I purchased. I picked it up. Um, the response curves help me with slamming more than the dead zone settings. So we need to talk. As a community, as a society. Joshua, I'm specifically talking to you, but anybody else. I bought the Dual Sense Edge for two reasons. One, last week's video convinced me to buy the Dual Sense Edge. Everybody was talking about the Dual Sense Edge and how it helped. Secondly, I got my bonus from work last week, and so I had a little extra money. And in the grand scheme of things, I was able to save more money than I spent on the controller. So I was like, you know what? I'll try it. I am having an incredibly difficult time figuring out what the F my settings are, mostly because I don't know what most of the shit means. So what I'm asking for from all of you, put your specifically hitting settings. I'm OK with pitching. Put your left stick settings in the comments and I will try a ton of them and I will see which one works for me. I need help. If you have the dual sense edge, tell me what your settings are. Please. I'm pretty sure I'm either going to use default or um, steady, I think it's called. Maybe I'm stupid. Um, the dead zone thing, I understand. I don't understand what the curve response thingy does. I'll show you guys what I'm using right now. I realize that I'm, I have the ability to do such a thing. Accessories, dual sense edge, custom profiles, hitting. Custom mod, no, it's this one. I have left stick default 3% dead zone right now. I, I don't know. I haven't a clue. The curve adjustment is set at zero. Please, I, I welcome all opinions on what you think will work. I am a PCI slammer, just like lots of us out there. So if I'm like you, please help a brother out. Joshua, thank you for being part of the comments last week. Um, SOS, please send help. Our next question comes from Cappy at... Okay, cat. Oh, Cappy Atlanta UGA. He likes Georgia. He's potentially from there. So last week we talked on the podcast, the show, the podcast, every Tuesday, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, um, SoundCloud. I guess if you're a SoundCloud person, I there are some must-haves. But in terms of what needs to improve, um. Overall, Sets and Seasons needs to improve. If Sets and Seasons is back, which at this point we don't know, I have been operating under the assumption that it will be back because it feels weird to me to make a, 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 a move this bold and then just abandon it after one year. So if Sets and Seasons is back, I need to see marked improvement attempts. Not every attempt is going to work, but I need to see steps taken. I need to see attempts at making sets and seasons more rewarding. More diversity in Legends. Better pacing and better spacing. Pacing meaning how often the content's coming. And spacing meaning the time between repeat 99s of certain guys. If you can give me MLB The Show 23's gameplay with a vastly improved Sets and Seasons content type, in my opinion, we're in for a very good year. If you give me MLB The Show 23's gameplay with the Power Creep model back, I think we're in for a very good year too. That's why I'm confident about 24. Either they go back to the Power Creep and it works like it always has, with some slight tweaks like they always make, or they're not stupid at SDS. They listen. They're pretty smart. They know a lot of people didn't like the way sets and seasons worked. So that would mean that they're going to give us the 23 gameplay with improvements made to sets and seasons. Because they're not just going to give us the same crap again. That's how I look at it. Maybe that's the optimist view. I don't know. You tell me. But that's why I think 24 is going to be uh, better. And to be fair, if I'm being frank, I didn't dislike MLB The Show 23. I do think there were glaring content problems, as we've discussed, and as we'll further discuss in tomorrow's podcast episode, spoiler alert. But like, the game didn't stink. It gave us fun cards, like JP friggin' Crawford, who I finally got P5. And 99 Stanton with the DH, he's incredible. And like, all these fun, cool guys... 
Except for John Donaldson. We don't want to talk about him. He's annoying. Shout out, but he's annoying. Basically, the biggest improvement that could be made is making sets and seasons better. However they do that, I'm open to it. New legends, more legends, better legends, better pacing, whatever it is. I think that is the biggest thing that could make 24 great. So I appreciate your question. And lastly, we're going to go to Mojo Lebowski. I want to know when they're going to drop last gen. We're about halfway through this generation's lifespan, and we still haven't let go. Yeah, um, it is. Un it's unfortunate from like a game development and progress standpoint, for sure. I don't automatically think that makes 24 bad. I do see why it could hamper its its ability to progress. But if we're taking things from a business standpoint, which we have to because SDS is running themselves as a business, they're going to milk every dollar they can out of out of old gen. Because there are some people who, for one reason or another, still have PlayStation 4 or whatever the other Xbox is called. Is it Xbox One? I don't even know. Xbox needs to come up with a bit better naming convention. PlayStation goes in number order. Xbox just, like, picks out of a hat and goes, oh, we're calling the new one the Xbox... I, I don't know. LCD screen. I, I don't know. Uh, from a business perspective, they're not going to get rid of it until they're forced to. Until they see the sales numbers. They must have been encouraged with MLB The Show 23 or 22 sales numbers on old gen. Because that's why they're still doing it. They saw that people purchased it on old gen. That's, I mean, ultimately, that's got to be what it is. I wish we could get to a point where there were separate versions, but that requires a lot more work and then investment on their end. I, there, there's a lot I wish would be different in terms of keeping the game optimized for what's happening in, in gaming right now. Based on the, the gameplay screenshot we got of Vladdy putting his finger to his lips and shushing everybody running around the bases, it does look like the player models are better. How much better remains to be seen, uh, we're going to wait for a gameplay trailer. But it does look better, so I, I have hope. Internet, that might be the closest I've ever kept it to 10 whole minutes, so be proud of me. Thank you. And hit that like button for my success. As always, if you guys have questions, leave them down below. Make sure you cop the merch because we have merch and it's 10% off, as you guys saw through the end of the month. Some super cool stuff there. And check back this week for the podcast on Tuesday. On Thursday, we got a really cool gameplay video. And on the 15th or maybe the 16th, depending on how I can get to recording and editing, we will go over the feature premiere that comes out this week. A lot of content coming, a lot of content coming for the next several months. You don't want to miss it. Thank you all for making it to the end. As always, I love you guys. Have a good week. See you next time.